Hey there guys, happy Tuesday. I have one more rotational problem involving the conservation of energy for us, and it's slightly more complex than what we saw in the last video. This time, we're provided some details about a mass and a cylinder and some amount of energy that we want the cylinder to have. Here's a picture to help put it into context. The mass hangs from a string, which is wrapped around a cylinder of radius R. Let's call the hanging mass, capital M, and the cylinder's mass, lowercase m. Now we want to figure out the height that capital M needs to descend, which I'll refer to as H, such that once we release this system from rest, the cylinder will turn in the direction of omega, and the block will fall to the ground, which grants the cylinder 480 joules of rotational kinetic energy. Let's kick things off by taking a look at the conservation of energy equation. Initially, everything is at rest. So there's no kinetic energy to be found on the left-hand side. That term is just zero. Additionally, we weren't told about any kind of friction or other kinds of work that need to be accounted for here. So that term will be zero as well. And then finally, once the block, uh, capital M, hits the ground, it has no potential energy left, so that term will be zero, too. So at this point, things are looking pretty similar to the setup that we saw in the last video, where some amount of potential energy is being converted into kinetic. But here, we have two different types of kinetic energy. We can't forget about the linear kinetic energy that's gained by capital M as it falls. That's where the difficulty of this problem lies. It wants us to start considering multiple types of energy in situations involving linear and rotational movement. So with that out of the way, let's do one last thing here and factor out the one half from both of these terms at the bottom. We'll come back to this equation once we know a little more about what's inside the parentheses. Let's start with omega, since we need that in order to figure out V. Here I've set the cylinder's kinetic energy expression to 480 joules, and we can use this to get an expression for omega. Go ahead and multiply both sides by 2, then divide both sides by the moment of inertia. Recall that the moment of inertia for a cylinder is the same as the moment of inertia for a disk, which is 1 half mr squared. And we can take the 1 half in the denominator and switch it up into the numerator by multiplying 960 joules by 2. Take the square root of both sides, and now omega is ours. Let's use it to get v next. The linear speed of capital M will be determined by the rotation of the cylinder, so we'll have to use this equation here. Let's just plug in the solved expression for omega, and since we need v squared, let's go ahead and square this whole thing to get the following. Notice that we have an r squared here being multiplied by an r squared in the denominator. So let's just cancel those out and get rid of r entirely. And now we have everything that we need to solve for h. So let's go back to that equation from the conservation of energy and plug in our expressions for v squared and omega squared. And what's nice is that the expression for 
the moment of inertia of the cylinder here will cancel out with the same expression down here. And with that gone, everything looks a lot cleaner. If we divide both sides by capital M and G from the left-hand side, well, now we have H isolated, and we're one step away from getting our answer. All we need to do is just plug in the numbers. When I put this all into my calculator, it tells me that this expression is approximately equal to the following distance of 13.9 meters. And hopefully, yours says the same. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next video.